I'm Peter Newman from RE and Weedsmart and today we're talking about soil amelioration and its effect on weeds. So this is the little three furrow cavernalin mouldboard plough. It's a competition mouldboard plough that Sally Peltzer and Alex Douglas purchased in the early 2000s. They were working at the Department of Ag at the time and they did some trials with it to bury weed seeds. Got fantastic results burying 99% of the weed seeds and getting big yield responses in the crops and I brought it to the northern wheat belt to give it a try on our non-wetting sands. So they have a problem with non-wetting, particularly in the topsoil, subsoil acidity and obviously weeds. And we thought we could fix all of those things with a moldboard plough and it turned out that we were right. It worked really, really well. So the farmers, the package became apply lime to the soil, moldboard it, it has to be wet soil, bury the weed seeds fix non-wetting, bury that lime to fix subsurface acidity and we got really big yield responses. So often 99% reduction in the weed seed bank while getting sometimes 100% yield response or often in that 500 kilo to a tonne per hectare yield response. So fantastic results. Just talking about some of the components of the mould board. This is the skimmer and this is the mould board itself. So this skimmer is really important for weed seed burial. What it does is it just skims off the top probably 50 mil of soil and dumps it into, into the trench uh, down deep before the, the large mould board comes along and, and then inverts the rest of the soil. Without these skimmers you can sort of tip the soil on its side and end up with strips of weed, not get that weed seed burial. So this skimmer is really important to get the full seed burial to good depth so that the weed seeds stay at depth and don't come up. So we know that with this, with a well set up mould board, we can get 99% plus weed seed burial below the depth from which they can emerge. So we try and get them below 20 centimetres depth. Often, sometimes we only achieve 15 centimetres, but we've managed to achieve that and this skimmer is a really critical part of that. If we put ryegrass down at that depth, we know it won't come up in that season and within three or four years, the majority of that ryegrass will be rotted and, and gone. Wild radish, on the other hand, we know that wild radish, when you put that at depth, it can last a bit longer. It can survive a bit longer at depth. However, after five years, there's really only a few percent of the wild radish seed left viable. Uh, the residual pre-emergent herbicides that we're using uh, need special attention when we do this soil amelioration with either a mould board or a spader or even a plaza plough because we've buried the topsoil so we've got low organic matter and we've now got wettable soil. So the herbicides are very active and they don't have organic matter to bind to. So the trial data is only just coming through on this, there's, there's more work ongoing now by Deep Herd and others. Uh, and there's also a lot of farmer observation. And the farmers are telling me that trifluralin's very damaging, and so they really uh, be very careful with trifluralin. And all the pre-emergence, if you think about it, all the water-soluble ones, the soil is now very wettable, and there's low organic matter, they become very, very active. So you just have to be very cautious. A lot of growers that are doing this or spading are often not even using a pre-emergent in the first year. They're just not taking the risk. They're just making sure they get the crop in and good cover on the paddock and then moving to pre-emergence in the in the following years but just being very cautious with the rates. The economics of these things it's the financial benefits are there they're huge so I did some numbers earlier this year for a, a meeting at Minganu uh, that that was held I called lots of growers found out their costs of mole boarding spading liming deep ripping Everything cost 70 bucks essentially. So mould board ploughing was roughly $70 a hectare, including the capital cost, machinery, the depreciation on the tractor, labour, fuel, the whole lot. Spading, roughly $70 as well. Some people are 65, but in that $70 range, four tonnes per hectare of lime is anywhere from 80 to $100 spread on a paddock. Deeper ripping to six or 700 mils, something else that a lot of growers in this part of the world are doing. That's also around about $70 per hectare. And when I put all of that in and grab Steve Davies yield data from these mould board spading and deep ripping sort of trials, the mould board and spading, I found a 600, 500 to 600% return on investment over 10 years. So massive financial rewards for people that have the soil types that will respond. 
So the moldboard plough can be like a reset button for a paddock. It can be, we've got a big seed bank, game over, start again, let's bury those weed seeds, get back to a very low seed bank, and then get back into the WeedSmart Big Six to keep that seed bank really low for a long time. So it can be really a, the fastest way to go from a weed seed blowout to very clean paddocks with good crops in a very short space of time, in one year.